I think um, I think we didn't look at this picture very much. Yes, no, not so much. Okay. Okay. So this is a steam engine. Remember that steam engine. This is very simplified, right? And in general, any heat engine. Okay. Any heat engine is doing this. Okay. It is on the pressure diagram moving out at high pressure, right? This is hot, right? And basically the way the steam engine works is it's very clever, is that it's got a little valve and whenever it wants to have the pressure that's inside the boiler, it opens that valve and that pressure that's in the boiler pushes the piston out, right? And it expands and then something clever happens and it goes back in at cold, whoops, that's not how you spell cold, right? It goes back in at a cold temperature, right? How do you do that? Well, to make the piston work against a cold temperature and a low pressure, you close that valve, open this valve, the condenser is cold. Or in the case of our steam engine, wasn't it just pumping it out into the room? Wasn't there just steam getting pushed out into the room? Yeah, there we go, right? Okay, so that, that basically is heat that's wasted, and that's the key concept here, right? With a heat engine, this is pressure, this is volume, it moves out at high pressure, in at cold pressure, that's why it does more work on the world than the world does on it. Okay. Now, let's draw a sand key diagram. This is what they're called. I didn't know that they were called this until I read uh, the IB like description of what I'm supposed to teach you, right? And they said that you should be able to interpret sand key diagrams. I'm like, uh-oh, what's a sand key diagram? Well, here's a sand key diagram. You've seen them, okay? They look like this, okay? So a sand key diagram, here is the hot temperature right? Heat leaves the hot temperature. This is QH, leaves the boiler, right? Okay. Some of it becomes work, right? Whoops, this should stay the same width to be a proper Sankey diagram. Some of it is wasted, right? We call this the QL, that's the wasted stuff, right? And this goes to the low temperature, right? In our case, this was the room, and the hot temperature was the boiler, the little bitty boiler that we were burning Hayden's planter underneath. Yes? Do you remember this? Yeah. yeah? Okay. So what it, concept zero is that all heat engines have to waste a little bit of heat. And the reason you have to waste heat is that you've got to let heat flow out so that you've got a cold temperature to work with, right? If you kept the steam inside the cylinder and recompressed it, you would be doing, you'd be basically on the heat, on the diagram, you'd be just going back and forth, right? Yeah? How much work do you do, network do you do, if you just go straight over, straight back? Zero network because there's no area inside your box, right? Okay, so you always have to waste a little heat. Now, what's clever is I believe it's downtown Minneapolis. There is a coal ge electrical generation plant. They burn coal, they generate you know, the steam, there's big turbines. When the turbines are done with the steam, it's still quite hot. What do you do with it? Well, you could vent it outside or you could sell that heat to the local buildings downtown. You could just pipe that steam on steam tunnels and little pipes and stuff under the street and, and heat buildings with it. Isn't that clever? That's sort of clever, right? I don't know. I think that's clever. That's a clever thing. Okay, so this is a sand key diagram. Sand, in a heat engine, if it's an engine, heat flows from hot to cold. Some is wasted, but some is use, useful as work, right? Now, on the pre-quiz you just did, doesn't the PV diagram, doesn't it go the other way? It's actually compressing at high pressure, isn't it? Doesn't it? Right? Then it cools down and it expands at low pressure. Well, this is hot. The compression is happening at hot, right? And this is cold, right? Everything is backwards about this. So if we drew a sand key diagram for this guy, right? Let's draw the sand key diagram. Okay, this sand key diagram is exactly the opposite. Okay, so let's draw this thing, right? This thing requires work, doesn't it? Didn't you get a negative 150 joules total for the work, right? So this thing is, heat is flowing too hot, right? We're doing work on it, some amount of work on it. This work is done on it, right? And then heat is flowing from the low temperature to the high temperature, yeah? Everything's backwards. Here heat flows from hot to cold, we get work out of it. But if you want heat to go from low, from cold, right? If you want heat to go from cold to hot, you have to do work. It's possible, but you have to do work. 
This is called not a heat engine, this is called a heat pump. You have one in your house, I bet. Where is it? You probably have several. Something that pumps heat from someplace that's cold out into a room that's warm. Did somebody say refrigerator? Yeah. There you go, it's a refrigerator, isn't it? Think about it. Okay, now I sent you guys, I gave you guys the task. Please stop. I gave you guys the task of finding the hot side of your refrigerator. Did you do that? Yeah, yeah, there you go. Was it uh, like chock a block full of like lint and stuff? Yeah. yeah, it's pretty gross. So do clean it out. Modern refrigerators are not fragile. They're designed to be vacuumed out. That little hot side is designed to be done. So if you didn't do that, do find that, right? Remember that your refrigerator is compressing the gas at a high temperature, high pressure, right? That's that little motor you hear running, right? And then it expands the gas at a cold temperature. That's how it makes the cold. That's how a refrigerator works. So the refrigerator does work to make heat flow from the freezer box to the room. Yeah? Question. Corey. They have to have a, pa a fan to pump the air, the cold air up, so they're a little less efficient. Maxwell. Yeah. And I open the door and I look from the middle. Yeah. There's nothing to take out. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. So you you have a hot side somewhere else, probably on the back side. You have to pull it away from the wall. Yeah. When it's running, find just go around and find the warm air coming out of it. There's warm air coming out of it somewhere. Yeah. So if it's freezer on the bottom, then maybe the vents on the back. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 And yeah, make sure there's also there's a it can't be too close to the wall. If it's too close, the air can't circulate back there, right? Okay. Now, this is a fun. This is sort of a fun thing. IB likes to ask questions like this. So if I took, and this is a key concept, right? Think about the heat that's entering the room. How does that compare to the heat that's leaving the freezer box? Look at the diagram. The heat entering the room is more or less than the heat leaving the, fire, the, the freezer box. It's more. In fact, this heat is equal to, you can make little formulas here, right? This here is QH is equal to QL plus W, isn't it? Right? So the heat entering the room is actually, not only is it the heat it's pumping out of the freezer box, and how does the heat get into the freezer box to begin with? Why does it always have to keep running every now and then to get the heat out of the freezer box? Does heat flow into the freezer box through the insulation? Yes, yes there we go, right? This is what's going on. So if, you're, if you're, your freezer is totally perfectly insulated and heat can't get in there, which is impossible, then it would never need to run. It would just stay cold. And when you put something warm in there, it would run for a little bit and then shut off, right? But in, in general, right, heat is always leaking into the freezer box. You have to keep pumping it out, right? So this is going to be more because it's this plus this. So what if I open the room? What if I open the door to the, the freezer box? What, what's going to happen to the temperature of the kitchen after many, many hours? Well, initially it might go down because there's lots of frozen food in the freezer, right? But eventually what's going to happen? It's just, it's like a closed loop. If this becomes the same as this, right? What's going to happen? Well, the motor's running, isn't it? It's going to get hotter, isn't it? Yeah, the motor's going to keep running. What's being pumped into the room is always going to be more than what was pumped out of the freezer box. And you basically can heat the room with a refrigerator. Yes? Yeah, so if, if you open the box and make the low side the same as the high side, right, it'll just sit there and pump around and around merrily, just like a, like a regular water pump pumping from the same bucket to the same bucket. Yes? Okay. Only it's also adding heat to it. The stuff that comes out is a bit warmer right, than the first time. Right? What if I take my freezer and I cut a hole in the wall? Of my, of my house, and I stick the hot side of the freezer outside and the cold side inside. Does that work? What if I stick the hot side outside and the cold side inside? Is that going to cool off my kitchen? Will that work? Is that exactly what an air conditioner is? Is anybody paying attention to me? Yeah, this is, that's exactly what an air conditioner is. So think about an air conditioner. It's got part, why do they have to stick out of a window? Why do you have to stick part of your air conditioner out the window? Heat goes outside, cold sides inside. Hot side outside, cold side inside. Yes? Yeah, there we go, right? Okay, so you could cool off. You could use your freezer. It would be a very, very inefficient um, air conditioner because it's not designed for that. But you could stick the hot side and pipe that air outside, and then you could cool your, your kitchen 
but you're, you'd be better.